philosophy in which it eventually emerged, the philosophy of Mahayana Buddhism, is as yet the most mature and really intelligent theory of human life and of the cosmos that man has ever devised. It is characteristic of this point of view that it adheres to the middle way. And the middle way doesn't mean moderation. It means the bringing together of opposites, of what we might call in our world spirit and matter, mind and body, mysticism and sensuality, unity and multiplicity, conformity and individualism. All these things are marvelously wedded together in the world view of Mahayana. And fundamental to Mahayana Buddhism is the idea of what is called the Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva means a person who has as his essence, sattva, bodhi, awakening. And it's usually used to mean a potential Buddha. Someone who is, as it were, just about to become a Buddha. That was the original sense. And so, uh, part of the Pali Canon uh, are, uh, is a book called the Jataka Mala, the, the uh, tales of the Buddha's previous lives. How he behaved when he was an animal. How he behaved when he was a man long before he became Buddha. And in all these stories, he is represented as sacrificing himself for the benefit of other beings. But since he had not yet become a fully-fledged Buddha, he's called in these stories a Bodhisattva. That really means a potential Buddha. But the point is that as a potential Buddha, as a Bodhisattva, he is always involved in situations where he is feeding himself for the hungry tigers and so on. Now, in the course of time, the term bodhisattva underwent a transformation. A bodhisattva matures and becomes a Buddha. And what does that mean popularly? It means that whoever is fully awakened to the way things are is delivered from any necessity to be involved in the world anymore. In other words, you can go on to a uh, transcendent level of being where time is abolished, where all times are now, where there are no problems, where there is perpetual, eternal peace, nirvana in the sense of the word parinirvana, means beyond nirvana, super nirvana. So that if you are fed up with this thing and you don't want to play the game of hide-and-seek anymore, you can go in the parinirvana state and be in total serenity. The person who gets out of the rat race and enters into eternal peace is called Pratyeka Buddha, which means private Buddha. Buddha who does not teach who does not help others. And in Mahayana literature, that is almost a term of abuse. Pratyeka Buddha. Pratyeka Buddhas are classed with unbelievers and heretics and infidels and fools. But the great thing is the Bodhisattva. All beings are thought of in popular Buddhism as constantly reincarnating again and again and again and again into the round of existence. Helplessly, because they still desire. They are therefore drawn back into the cycle. The Bodhisattva goes back into the cycle with his eyes wide open, voluntarily, and allows himself to be sucked in. And this is normally interpreted as an act of supreme compassion. And Bodhisattvas can assume any guise. They can get furiously angry if necessary, in order to 
discourage uh, evil beings, even uh, could assume the role of a prostitute and, and live that way so as to deliver beings uh, at that level of life, could become an animal, could become an insect, become a, uh, a maggot, anything, you know, all deliberately and in full consciousness to carry on the work of the deliverance of all beings. Now that's the way the popular mind understands it. And therefore the bodhisattvas are all revered and respected and worshipped and looked upon as gods as we look upon God in the West and as saviors as the Christian looks upon Jesus. But underneath this myth there is a profound philosophical idea and that is this. It goes back to the Hindu philosophy of Advaita and non-duality. Namely, the, the, du the apparent dualism of I and thou, of the knower and the known, the subject and the object, is unreal. And so also, the apparent duality between Maya, the world illusion, and reality is unreal. The apparent duality or difference between the enlightened and the ignorant person is unreal. So the apparent duality of bondage and deliverance or liberation is unreal. The wise, the perfectly wise man is the one who realizes vividly that the ideal place is the place where you are. That if you could see this moment, that you need nothing beyond this moment, now, sitting here, irrespective of anything I might be saying to you, of any ideas you might have rattling around in your brains, that here and now is the absolute which than which there is no witcher. Only we prevent ourselves from seeing this because we're always saying, well, there ought to be something more. Am I missing something somehow? See? Oh, nobody sees it. Now, uh, then also, the most far out form of Mahayana Buddhism is, in, is called the Pure Land School. Jodo Shinshu. Jodo means pure land, Shinshu, true sect. But that is the principle of Mahayana. And that is, you see, your acceptance of yourself as you are is the same thing as coming to live now as you are. You see, now is as you are, in the moment. But you can't come to now and you can't accept yourself on purpose. Because the moment you do that, you're doing something unnecessary. You're doing a little bit more. That's what they call in Zen legs on a snake or a beard on a eunuch. 